Hello, my little darklings. My name is Ayaria, and welcome to Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. This is a detective style game. We're going to be solving cases together, following a young Sherlock Holmes. This is very Lovecraftian in style, and it has a lot of uh, connections towards Cthulhu. Um, but I won't spoil too much of it. It is it is very interesting, and there are four uh, Sherlock Holmes games made by this creator, um, so I very much enjoy them, and I can't wait to share them with you. The Shadow Over London. Baker Street. Dr. Watson, would you kindly close the door behind you so that we can limit the price of your carelessness to merely hours of work rather than days? My apologies, Mr. Holmes. I found myself rather taken aback. <laughs> I saw tidier houses in war-torn Afghanistan. Are those my surgical needles? I ran out of tax and the matter required immediate attention. Was that my supper? Plainly not, for I was the one who ate it. Hmm, I set it aside for this evening. And for that, I am grateful. Is that my bed? <laughs> Watson, since you've proven yourself a master of observation, might I ask you to apply your skills to a more pertinent question? Namely, the whereabouts of today's newspapers. They are the key to everything. The newsboy is usually reliable. Medically speaking, I often find that the key to everything is good sleep. In a bed. Your papers are here, on the table. <laughs> Today. I love their squabbling back and forth. They do that uh, throughout the different games. I also very much appreciate young Sherlock's style here. Very Slytherin. London Advertiser, September 28th, 1882. Tensions between England and Sweden are running high after a series of unfortunate mishaps during a recent visit to London by Swedish Princess Ilder. Chief among the scandals was the embarrassment of the British diplomatic corps as a result of the unexplained disappearance of Princess Ilder's personal bodyguard. The longtime member of her inner circle took the opportunity to explore London while off duty and never returned from his late night promenade. A spokesman for the police assures the advertiser that they are confident the bodyguard will be located, as he is a striking representative of the Scandinavian people. A man like that gets noticed, whether by his peers at the gentlemen's clubs or the fair nightingales who comfort them. Local gossip, all of it uninteresting. Can't stand local gossip. Your order from Barnes Bookshop has arrived, Doctor. Barnes insists on delivering the books to our door, even though we could easily walk to his shop. That's good service. And it is. Another letter from Werner. I never reply, but they keep coming. I don't see the strand. Where is it? Pardon me? I am on the precipice of uncovering a pattern of crime across London spanning many months and involving many men. The missing paper cannot be a coincidence. That's preposterous. My dear fellow, life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man can invent. Well, life used your newspaper to wipe its posterior, so after that unpleasant discovery this morning, I disposed of it. But in lieu of the strand, perhaps I can deliver you something equally tantalizing. I have just returned from a patient of mine, Captain Stemwick, who... No, no, that will not do. Grab your coat, Dr. Watson. Let us hope nobody has collected the dustbin. Oh, he's very unamused. Got 
got all these outfits. I love this coat. Cactus spine. If it gets in your skin, it's awfully tricky to remove, and when laced with poison, the perfect assassination tool. You were mistaken, Dr. Watson. The paper was indeed dirtied, but not how you implied. It's potting soil. See, Watson? The conspiracy is real. Someone tried to poison me. <laughs> poison? You? That's madness. Madness. Get the strand. Get your copy of the strand here. Sorry, Mr. Holmes. I just sold my last paper. Glassed. Then why are you still here? Boss pays by the hour. No sense in returning early. <laughs> You're a bright child. I presume you see everything that goes on around here? Nothing gets past me, mister. Then tell me, did you notice anyone suspicious at my door this morning? Hmm. Like the man with your newspaper? Precisely. What do you know? I know the value of a shilling. Dr. Watson. Cool, now I can take the day off. <laughs> Did you see what he was up to? Nah, not really. I saw him approaching your house, but I had a customer. Then there's a loud bang. I ducked down. Not because I was scared, because I wasn't. I had to protect the merchandise, and all I could see was him kneeling at your door. Which way did he go? Not sure. I was distracted by customers. Sorry. Can you describe the man you saw? He was carrying a lot of books. Up to his chin, they were. Never heard of a well-read assassin. Looks can deceive. Hence the appeal of disguises. All right. You earned your shilling. That'll be all. Thanks, Mr. Holmes. Maybe I could be your eyes and ears. If you have more shillings. <laughs> Boy knows how to do business. All right. So who ruined it? The newsboy said this suspicious man was carrying a stack of books, and this morning, Mr. Barnes, the local bookseller, delivered a novel for Dr. Watson. A cactus spine for assassination, a loud bang. A visit to Mr. Barnes is in order. Come now, Mr. Holmes. Get the strand. Yes, Barnes Get your copy of the strand he here. Also has its scruples. Not every pawn knows it's part of a game. I like this. You get to do like character profiles on some of the different people that you beat. Newspaper ink. Sore left leg. And high heels. A workaholic or a blackmail victim? Hmm? Mr. Barnes has developed a limp and has large bags under his eyes, the results of long hours of intense work. He is not very confident and tries to appear taller by wearing high heels. It seems unlikely that such a person would be involved in a murder plot, even if the ink on his hands suggests he is the one who soiled the newspaper. Nevertheless, Mr. Barnes could still be a pawn in a bigger plan without his knowledge. Mr. Barnes, a word. 
Oh, for goodness sake. He just takes off. He's scared. <laughs> Who, uh, who goes there? Sherlock Holmes. Now, will you please... Mr. Holmes. Golly, I did not see you coming. Would you care to answer some questions for me? Well, I wish I could, but I am deep in the weeds with work. How about we uh, reschedule in a month or two? Come now, Mr. Barnes. It will only take a moment. No, really deep in the weeds with, uh, with important things. Well, help yourself to any book. Just take it a pay later. I trust you, Mr. Holmes. Barnes doesn't seem like himself. Why is he acting this way? You're asking the right questions, Doctor. Let's find a way to coax him out. <gasps> Look at the dog. So, Barnes has a dog now. Who's a good boy? <laughs> so cute. The ladder is broken recently, judging by the freshness of the wood. I could hardly imagine anything more macabre. I like it. I like that painting. Look at all these books. The Jungle Book. Basics of cryptoanalysis, cryptography in Egypt. It appears Barnes has an interesting hobby. A catalogue of exotic plants on Barnes's counter. The name of the catalogue reads, Everlasting Plants for an Everlasting Love. Adorable. Perhaps a hopeless romantic? An improvised stand, but it does make the flowers more visible. In the language of Mycroft's secret agents, it's a sign. Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. I wonder who the recipient is. The finest view London has to offer. That sounds so sarcastic. a lot of loading screens in this game. Oh, look how beautiful. Encouraging people to stop and smell the roses. Our national emblem. God save the queen. It must take patience and care to produce a bloom so beautiful. I imagine so. I merely sell them. Familiar spine. That's what I found in my dustbin. The pot is damaged. The blow was severe, but softened by something. Anything tickle your fancy, Mr. Holmes? I love her outfit. Boyd's eye contact or distracted. Makeup. Luxury fabric. Deceased husband brooch. Oh, look at the dog. Very nice, clean boots. Oh no, you don't dress this good if you're still grieving your dead husband. I'm sorry. She's ready to move on. Mrs. Fleming wears a mourning brooch a, in memory of her late husband. Her dress is made from an expensive fabric that is not suitable for work. 
Her shoes show no traces of mud. She must have changed them when she arrived. Her eyes constantly dart around the street, seemingly in search for something. Perhaps she is waiting for someone. While Mrs. Fleming cherishes the memory of her departed husband, she is trying to move on, as suggested by her makeup and nice outfit. Perhaps she is dressing to attract someone's attention, or simply because she has learned to love herself again. Mrs. Fleming, you look particularly lovely today. Is there a reason? Does a woman need a reason to look or feel beautiful? No, but your distant look suggests you seek one man's gaze in particular. Who told you that? Nobody. Merely a keen eye and some simple deduction. Well, I'll kindly ask you to keep your keen eye to yourself, Mr. Holmes. Ooh. One of these things is not like the other. Come again? The cactus. Those fearsome spines can prove a devil to remove. And the sap is often toxic. And a rose thorn can give you tetanus, but we still grow them. The cactus seems comparatively harmless. Though you have me thinking it must be valuable. I was under the impression that you knew its price already. Your guess is as good as mine. The first time I saw this cactus was when I came back from my break. Interesting. So she doesn't really seem to know anything about it. Ooh, what about the dead what flowers? What do you make of the flowers in Barnes' shop window? Well, they could use a bit of water. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything how? I'm not sure I follow Mr. Holmes. Why do you think they're there? Are you suggesting the flowers are for me? It seems likely, does it not? Oh. I hope you're right. Oh, seems like she has a little crush, wouldn't you say? Are you familiar with Mr. Barnes? Yes. No, not really. Well, in a way. What on earth does that mean? I know who he is, of course. But we haven't shared much more than a look. A look? Yes. Each morning I go for a walk in the park with my dog. And most days I spot Mr. Barnes there with his new puppy. So we see each other. Actually, we once met briefly while our dogs played. He was quiet and seemed unsteady as he approached. But since then, we've never spoken. I often see him staring through the shop window. Sometimes I wonder what he thinks about that would edge such longing onto his face. Oh, She has concern for him. I think they both have crushes on each other. Does our mind palace say? Why is Barnes acting so strangely? Well, he does have this catalog of love plants, and I think it has something to do with Mrs. Fleming. If he's got a crush, he's not going to be able to keep himself, you know, in the game, you know? Maybe the dead flowers, because that seems to be pointed towards her. Yeah. Oh, the cactus in a cracked pot, because she said that she didn't know how it got there. Barnes displays a bouquet of dead flowers to attract the attention of Mrs. Fleming, a florist. He may hope she will come into his shop and give him watering advice, or it could simply be a symbol of his desperation. Barnes anonymously gifted her a cactus, which he ordered from a catalog on his counter. A questionable choice, but for Barnes, a symbol of his eternal love, since the catalog presents these cacti as immortal. Plainly, this is the same cactus he dropped on the strand outside 221B Baker Street. Now to hear the full story. Now we get to confront Mr. Hmm. Barnes about his little I, crush. I uh, think perhaps I have been chasing shadows. Do not despair, Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. We better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. Mr. Barnes! Mr. Barnes, I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. 
can't hear you very well from behind the door. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalogue and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention and wear high heels to appear taller and more desirable. You are her secret admirer. I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. Barnes, it's Dr. Watson. Rest assured, we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Please come out. Uh, all right, then. So, you know what happened then? I was on my way back from the post office, having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package, heavy too, and when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus in your paper. Forgive me. I needed that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. <laughs> your actions were rather disruptive. Your clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Oh, it's mm -hmm. true. I am useless with this sort of thing. I'm not even sure if Mrs. Fleming noticed. Uh, let's give him advice. As in most things in life, truth is the answer. Cease with the obtruse signals and anonymous gifts and simply talk to the woman. What is the worst that can happen? She rejects you and you are freed from this endless purgatory. That... Yes, you are correct, of course. I do have a slight tendency to overthink things. Thank you. So, at last, we return to the matter of the paper. I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. You had an issue of The Strand here all along? Well, naturally. I am a bookseller. I have a subscription to every magazine and newspaper in London. So you ought to be familiar with the concept of burying the lead. I... Oh, no. Uh, my apologies, Mr. Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages and translation and... and uh... Yes, yes, OK. <laughs> Just give me the paper. The Strand, September 28th, 1882. Saltpeter explosion rocks docks. Locals at the Port of London had a rude awakening last night with loud bangs and thick red smoke disturbing the peace. Merchant ship Moskva had docked at Pier N3 in the early evening, en route to Europe, when it was rocked by several concussive explosions. The Port Authority is yet to comment on the incident, and it is unknown if any crew members were on board at the time. Eyewitnesses report seeing saltpeter leaking into the river, but with the area still off limits to workers and the public, it may be some time before we have a full account of what transpired. Come, Dr. Watson. Let us put this matter behind us. Farewell, Mr. Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs. Fleming. Alrighty, I think this is a perfect place to stop our first episode. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and you happen to enjoy the video, feel free to subscribe and join our lovely little Darkling family. But for now, I will see you all in the next video.